it's the day before what they're calling the largest Latino event ever in the history of this town. But I'm not sure that anybody's ever really done something that was uniquely Latino. You know, there have been Chicano uh, exhibitions, but I think there's a little difference, is that this is not necessarily politically charged. It's not trying to prove anything. It's introducing uh, ourselves to a more conscious level of the creative economy. Well, in San Antonio, why do people come here? They come looking for something, what is it? We're throwing the dice that, that, that uh, as, a, as a top of the table, an effort that it's the economy of art. Well, I think they're trying to make everybody aware of the creative aspect that's around the entire city. And, you know, to get all people involved. Because everybody's creative in some, in some sense of the word. Um, and that they're trying to do, trying, they're, what they're doing is creating a marketplace for the artists themselves. Yeah. But, you know, the, the term starving artist should be obsolete. <laughs> but it's not, and it's, it's, it's far from ever being obsolete. We're trying to create a, 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 an economic empowerment movement for artists to understand that there's no reason for them to be starving artists. You know? We're, we're trying very purposely for it not to be an exhibition. We need it to be a bazaar. Yes. So price tags, all that are very important. What, what, what we're trying to do, the, the, the purpose of the project, we do we, money? No, no. We, 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 it's to make money. It's, it's that for the artists, the artists, the, the focus of this project is to focus on the artists' creative, uh, their, their, um, their role in the creative economy. So really, our exercise here is to sell. Anymore, right? Our exercise is to, <laughs> is to practice negotiation. What's going on here with La Gloria? Well, actually, this is the first first time that I think it's been held. Right. And so it's uh, uh, Gabriel Velasco has been working to compile a group of artists to showcase their work. Because we're really not, I don't think a lot of us are mainstream artists. And so it's an opportunity, a good opportunity for people who haven't had the, uh, the venues to show their work, exhibit their work, to come here and show their work on a one-day basis, hopefully to a large segment of the population in San Antonio. So. So there, there are 20 artists that are going in to create uh, not necessarily a gallery environment, out, but, but, a, but a for sale gallery environment. So it's supposed to look more like a Turkish bazaar. We've told people that are setting it up, if you, when you're done with it, if it looks like you're in a, in a museum, you didn't, you didn't do what it's supposed to be done. Tell me a, bit, a little bit about what, what they're going to be doing here. Um, right here, it's just going to be in this building an area for visual artists to set up their work, display it, hopefully make some connections, hopefully make some sales. It's an opportunity to, you know, stimulate the artistic economy and hopefully bring people in and introduce them to some great art that San Antonio has to offer. And then there's also going to be music here. There's going to be some bands playing, so it should be a lot of fun. I'd like to say this history in the making this is the first inaugural event. Uh, the Gloria, very big honor for me to be invited by Gabriel to come do this. Uh, I think it's going to be something that's going to make a lot of people uh, more well known or get you on the map. I want to say, look for a good turnout, what, uh, three, four hundred, I think, would be a, a good guesstimate. Yeah, so. Uh, what do you think this is going to do for the artist community here with this, this, this type of project? I think it's going to actually give the artist community a lot of exposure, a lot of well deserved and uh, overdue, long needed exposure. And that's part of what it's about, is getting exposure, getting seen, getting out there, getting known. And uh, to take part in something on this scale, as I say this is citywide, uh, uh, it can only be a good thing. Art can sometimes be seen as a, as a side thing, as an extracurricular, uh, maybe even an under, underground uh, economy. Uh, this is almost an effort to pull that out from underneath and put it on top. And it's different in that the language that we're introducing is a, is a business language. And when we talk about the creative economy and, and uh, uh, you know, it, it as, a, as a stimulus in general, that if people come to town because they know that there's all this art, that people could say, hey, are you gonna go to a convention in San Antonio? And he says, no, no, but I'm gonna go down there and just look for art, because that's a hell of a place. It's, it's a historic event. Uh, it's a first, and um, I'm here standing where I used to come to El Progreso, pay a Nicholas sit and saw those Saturday morning matinees. We cannot seek achievement for ourselves and forget about progress and prosperity for our community. Our ambitions must be broad enough to include the aspirations and needs of others for their sake and for our own. Well, it's a 
it's a real privilege to be a part of a, of a community who is willing to get together and kind of form a art, I guess, kind of alliance, helping each other becoming one. And I think it it shows unity and um, community and being a part of, I guess, a, of a bigger thing, a bigger whole. Um, I think it's a, it's wonderful. I wish you know we would do it more often as artists. It's like an economic development for the artist. Right. Role. Exactly. Mm -hmm. You know, it's going to give us an opportunity to have a platform to introduce ourselves to the community, show some work, show people that what San Antonio has to offer. I think. I think it's also going to do a lot for the community in which is being hosted as well. There's a lot of talent in this neighborhood, in this part of town, that has gone pretty much unnoticed or unrecognized. It's going to, number one, tap into that. And it's also going to encourage people who are here, who haven't been bringing themselves forward, to come out and say, OK, see what's happening here, see what can be done here, and I can be a part of that. So I think that's going to be a very, very huge dynamic in opening the whole thing up. So you're opening up a big wormhole here where people are going to be able to come through. You're going to see a lot of new talent, and a lot of people who've been doing it for a while as well. Uh, get re-sparked, I would say. Yeah, get reinvigorated. For those that want to see it as a business, the one thing that's been missing is a marqueta, the the actual place where that happens. This is a vignette of a possibilities, all thrown into one situation. And the question in the end is, well, why not? In the end, it should be the the question should be why not? Oh, we can't invest in that. Well, why not? Oh, we can't invest in the arts. Well, why not? But I think the language that has been talked about for the last 60 years has been art as a function of entitlement. Art through interventionism in, in uh, 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 using cultura as a powerful force for transformation. Okay, that's fine. We still gotta do that. We will do that perpetually. But not at the expense of art on the other side of entitlement where nobody does anything for you. If you wanna get something done, you gotta get it done for yourself. Spaces at a premium anywhere you go, galleries, wherever, and so anytime I, I every time I go into a building or whatever and I see blank walls, I think there needs to be art on these walls, you know. I've been a professional artist for about um, seven years now. Yeah, about seven years. Mm -hmm. And and is this the first time you've been around something like this? What they're doing? Um, I've done Luminaria before, but other than that, I usually just do gallery shows and that sort of thing. This is a little different, first time doing something of this, this scale. And that's what this event is intended to do. It's intended to blitz the press. For, and, and you know what, the press really, our hat's gotta be off to the press too, because the press was, was kind of blown away with the idea that this was being done by citizens and by independent artists. There are no institutions at the helm of this, not one, not the city, not, not, the, not the Guadalupe, not the Avenida, except that they understood the concept and said, we will get behind you, we will support you independent people. And now we have to be responsible about what it is that we do and pull it off. So it's communities helping the community. Yeah, yeah. Just remembering that, that we talk about the community in terms of entitlement, and this is not that term. This is that term of that community that maybe is cut off from services but that they're still a community because they stick together. As everyone knows, some artists have ups and downs. And for myself, as a kind of a young artist, I look up to the older artists and the more experienced artists to kind of lead the way. And by them um, allowing me to be a part of this kind of bigger group creates opportunity, definitely. Eight forty-two now. Una Noche de la Gloria promises to be a huge event on Saturday. It's a first of its kind uh, deal on the West Side. It'll be a city block full of food, music, art, and poetry, among many other things. Anthony Flores is one of the many people who will be performing there. He's a poet, a poet like a, a slam artist, or is uh, that what was the appropriate yeah, uh, term? The appropriate uh, slam poetry is okay. the, the exact thing that I do. It's performance poetry. It's a uh, poetry meets rock and roll meets hip hop. It's a little bit louder, more right. theater based, a little bit more animated than your standard uh, poetry on the page. Uh, it's keeping poetry alive for the young people, especially high school, um, college kids, and all the new poets coming out. 
That's, That's wonderful. It. And you've done this nationally. You've traveled and yes, done this. Yes, uh, I've traveled with the national team from here in San Antonio. Mm -hmm. We just came back from Florida in August. Uh, I've performed at the Lincoln Center with uh, uh, slam poetry. So I've taken uh, San Antonio all over the country and, and the poetry of the people and the streets here. A lot of performers will be taking part this weekend. And I was just reading up here. It's uh, spoken word renegade verse and master storytellers oh yes yes uh, we have a writer's block uh, stage set up for this festival at the avenida guadalupe mm -hmm. and it's six hours of poetry we have featured artists everybody's welcome to come out and read so it's an open sign up it's an open mic so we're hoping the community can come out and uh, anywhere from a five-year-old to an 80 year old can get up there and read their original stuff or things that they want to share i want to set the world on fire not so much as an arsonist but as a lyrical Pyromaniac. This is not a game of limbo, teacher. So don't bring along any low expectations of me. I'm liable to crush them underneath my shoes and utilize the backside of your underestimations as another piece of paper I can use. I want to gargle and swish the ink around my brain and spit out my own stain. I want a surface that's ready and willing to believe anything I have the power in me to make it believe. And trust me, I can convince a sheet of paper that it's still a tree. Make it sprout new leaves in the warm springtime of my breath. Just let me have it. Just let me get the fingers of my mind on it and I'll twist it with my tongue into a complicated piece of verbal origami. Here's a poem that's a boat you can use to sail the stars. Here's a little swan who never sings its final song. And this poem is an acrobat who trusts eternally in the invisible hand of love to always catch it when it falls. Don't let me hit the ground, teacher. Sometimes the best way to open up to other people's stories is to be allowed to write your own. All I'm asking for is that clean sheet of paper. I want to gargle and swish the ink around my brain and spit out my own stain. Because every hour of our living dares us to leave a mark. Well, you know, that's kind of a, uh, that's where, you know, poetry began, was on the streets, you know, so this is our way of bringing it back to the streets, you know, and poetry is, you know, San Antonio is like the home of Chicano poets, you know, and uh, we just recently lost quite a few of them in the past few years, and so this is kind of in honor of, uh, of the many Chicano poets that kind of mentored many of us, you know, and so, and the group that's actually putting it together is called Writer's Block. Yeah, pretty bad. That's good. Yeah. Uh, we'll have all this lit up and then uh, Roger Velasquez and the Latin Legends will play at 11 right there. So right. we're going to build a stage, man. We're going to extend that all the way out. And we'll have uh, you know, lights shooting up and laser light. The car, show, the car club will be all along that street. That's going to be happening right there. There'll be a band at Linda's, uh, a DJ at Linda's. Where's the, there's going to be a fashion show? Yeah, it'll be right on the street right here. There'll be a stage built tomorrow. Uh, Agosto Cuella is a local uh, fashion designer. Um, some type of video, probably a video about the murals that they've done throughout the west side. They'll put a projector here? Yeah. Walk up there for the poets. We have the band right here. Along the, the whole glass right there, we're projecting from the inside these, uh, these, uh, these images, you know, that we uh, have around spoken word. So all this would be just lit up with kind of, you know, different images moving around. This whole place will be transformed tomorrow. Yeah. It's going to be great. Yeah. It's been a long realization of Gabriel's. Yeah. Yeah. It's been about a year. About a year in the making. Yep. Artists doing their work right here. In a couple of these cubicles, there'll be uh, blacklight artists doing their stuff inside there. Um, There'll also be a battle out here between artists in time to see who produces you know, the best piece or you know, the audience will you know, uh, probably choose the best one. But that'll be all happening. very 
interesting to see the change in this uh, on this day that I almost felt like like that, that, that transformation is beyond just the plaza just beyond the kitchen area it's the streets now Black Gloria and all that what a, a incredible difference it's like you know like a dream you know Coming from these communities, we know that uh, what those things, those memories represent is, is, the, is really the process of our achieving La Gloria. And that we go through things and, and we're no different than, than, than other places in this nation. Except when we accept keeping things the way they are. When we romanticize our poverty and don't, don't realize that uh, if we're not getting out, it's because there aren't enough of us going back to, to pull them out. La Gloria, that's what, what La Gloria is. How are you doing today? Pretty good, how are you? What's your name? Uh, my name is Jeffrey Hull, and uh, you're a painter. I am an acrylic painter on canvas, uh-huh. And you're from, where are you from? I'm from San Antonio, Texas. I originally grew up on the west side here in this neighborhood. Really? Uh, and then moved over to the north, north side of town and uh, went back visiting the old neighborhood. Is it quite what it used to be? <laughs> so what's that like for you to come back here and have an event? How, what does that mean to you? Um, on a personal level, it means a big thing. Uh, being that I grew up in this neighborhood, we didn't have this kind of stuff that I remember as a child. And a lot of my friends are either dead or locked up. Uh, so I see it as an opportunity to show some of the kids and the younger generation in the neighborhood that there's a way out, that things don't have to be a certain way. Uh, it's been a really uh, positive thing for me, you know. Um, coming from the streets, being a recovering drug addict, I've been sober going on four years, been painting three and a half years. To give somebody the opportunity to see that life can be different is really important to me. Yeah, it's, it's the first thing of its kind. It's uh, gathering a bunch of artists, coming together, um, you know, painting, bringing their works, kind of, you know, bringing this, this uh, San Antonio has been such a dead art market, bringing it and making it a little bit bigger, make it a little more national. So. It's really important, I think, especially in a neighborhood like this, that really, uh, it's a lower income side of town, uh, but it, it, it's great to give uh, people the opportunity to, to do this kind of stuff, especially at this economic time. Uh, actually, I'm on workman's comp and just got released from that, so financially I'm struggling. So this gives me an opportunity to do that, as well as, as, as to give a good message too. I mean, you know, that's really, for me, that's a little more important uh, than anything. Ahí en la calle Tecos. En la calle, ah, Tecos. Tecos, Tecos yeah. yeah. Anyway, I walked by there and I heard the piano playing. So I used to walk by there to hear the piano playing and it was Fernando. I don't remember exactly when I met him, but I remember going to his house. Yeah. I recognize how great he was with a brush and, and with a one stroke sign painting. He could, he, he had a touch where he could, everything down. He made it easy for me when I was in this play because he told me, he showed me how to make my, my numbers down, 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 you know, never up, always down, down, and, and they were what you call fast. I never wanted to be like the number one artist or anything like that. All I wanted to do was paint that made me happy. Colors made me happy. How long have you been painting for? Almost 70 years. Well, in May it will be 70 years. Piano, I've been to about 70, 74 years. Oh. Yeah, he's Almost an old 100. man. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know what I wanted to ask about was uh, about just how you um, painted the, uh, the painting La Gloria. Hey, you want to bring that over here real quick? 
Then maybe. There's a light down here, you know. And this is the view of the city. Uh, that's from a, from a photograph. Then what she's doing is she's releasing them. She's had them in her, in her dress. She was holding them down, flowers in her dress, and then she released her dress and the flowers are coming down. But she represents uh, a new young mother person. And, uh, and that's why uh, San Antonio has a lot of pride and, and um, a lot of history, a lot of history. But, uh, but unfortunately, sometimes they just remember from the Bell of the Alamo this, this way. When before the Bell of the Alamo, that went back 350 years. 300, what happened 350 years? Uh, I mean, developing of the of, of the, our city, our culture. When I, when I heard the, the Spanish guitar, I was fascinated, like Freeman, like everybody else. And I heard there's something different in music. I heard tremolo, I heard this dedo pulgar. How can one person be this small? So I got interested and I started playing the guitar. I told you to be later on when I saw him. When he came to Antonio, he told me I'm writing some new Spanish music from, from the flamenco guitar and I'm putting it, putting it in the classic form. And I'm the one that plays the tremolo. I play the tremolo. I can play with both hands or the tremolo, tremolino. It's a, it's, it's a row of the, of, of the, like a mandolin. But with a different techniques than the piano. That nobody has, to, that's what I'm known for. I'm known for the tremolo in the, in the world. When I played the tremolo, even Fiedler threw his towel away. Says, what you doing? How you do that? These are the things that stay with me. Those things that, uh, they belong to me. They belong to me. So I worked at it and I worked at it and I worked at it. And I try to teach it to concert pianists, but they try to do it too fast and they get like that. How is it possible that they can bring so many different sorts of artists together? and to show and give everybody a chance to show their art, their sculpture, their, their attire, uh, their paintings, their music. Uh, it, it is wonderful. And to bring it to that, to that area, which has always been a historical area, uh, great actors, great uh, read, read. The altar. And, and the knowledge of the good. I always call it knowledge of the good. The, one of the highest virtues. There's a lot of things going on that are beautiful, they're great. And I think the Gloria is going to stand out and become a, what it is, a true glory of talents. If I'm going to be in the Gloria next year, I'm going to tell everybody's uncle. Yeah.
I think that La Gloria has allowed artists to to kind of create their own platform to um, to then say this is the way I want it to be done and I think that that if I'm allowed to do it this way it will succeed. It's important that that as artists and we're allowed then to be the the the, the ones put in, in the, the position of being the leader to then delegate to our, our committee, this is what we need to, to accomplish. Uh, this that we've committed to for, for a bigger part, which is La Gloria. We were creating a, a kind of a stir and, and our neighbors in the neighborhood felt that that we were not in a commercial district to be doing what we're doing. So they attacked us in that sense. Uh, the neighborhood revitalization, uh, we got attacked by uh, co-compliance, the sheriff's department came, the SAPD, uh, from every angle, you know, they, and, and it was funny because all we were doing was art. All we were doing was just creating an outlet for these people that had kind of had no voice at the time. And I mean, things have changed, but it's still a struggle. And I continue that struggle, but now it's fashion for me. Strives to be is is, is a, a, a collaboration of different artists uh, with with uh, with different things to bring to the table. But then, in the, in, and also in the process, you are uh, putting your work out there for an audience that maybe not, might not be used to seeing everything put together in, in one space and 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 available for sale or or available for 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 future uh, purchases, whatever. I believe that it was probably something long overdue. Um, the press is pretty fickle here in San Antonio as it is elsewhere, but I felt that that they they knew that it was something important happening and they and they had heard word of mouth through a grassroots kind of buzz and they were like, hey, what's this rumbling we're feeling? What's going on? What's this La Gloria? And you know, I know a lot of people that 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 are influenced by what the paper writes and so otherwise they don't know about it. So I feel that the press was right on by, by coming to our, our aid and, 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 and in this case them themselves looking like they're on top of things. It's going well. It's going almost exactly as planned. Uh, because earlier we had some shortages of electrical cords, but I walked around and it looks like everything worked out. Uh, the fashion show was incredible. Uh, the, uh, uh, the opening performance was incredible. So it's a couple of uh, people that I got to find, but for the most part, it went exactly 
the way that we envisioned it. So now we have a benchmark to know where we're going for 2010. But but this answers the question: Who's San Antonio? What is San Antonio? The job was to say, okay, San Antonio, let's come out because people are saying this and saying that, and we're from here, and we know it's not. But here we are. This is it. So this is it. Guadalupe Control Center, Avenida Guadalupe, but uh, we're talking the whole block that, that we look at every every space like Linda's for example or Giovanni's and and, and just by by seeing what happened, how important the music and, the, and some things that maybe aren't exactly planned that way but it just happens that bringing them to the right bringing them together in the right places economically it works for the, the, for the restaurant or the business that's there. The, the, the component of music as a whole uh, is intended to do two things. First thing, to, to create a, an avenue for up-and-coming bands to break in while the leadership of Calo goes out and finds people who hire bands, who are interested in bands and bring them there to try to make this place, on this day, the place you would go to to find some, some up and coming talent. And in a way, talent that may not be getting, be getting out to the city in the mainstream because what we're, we're really trying to do is go out there and find those bands that are having trouble breaking through and giving them a first class venue to, to uh, show their wares. Oh, no, we're with them, oh, and I, I got permission to be here. You know, we did some coordination, but for the most part, none of us knew what was going to happen, so we didn't know what kind of music Jason was bringing in, and Jason took in a punk rock band into Linda's Mexican restaurant. One more, one more. How about it? So, on one end, you see Linda's Mexican restaurant operating with this punk rock with a high-level light system changing colors, and they're playing punk. And you would think that would never work, but when you let things happen, everything worked out fine. And even Linda uh, had the best night of her life in terms of uh, money making is concerned. And Jason is very excited, so what the video allows us to do is to be able to experience it the way that it really was. Well, one of the things that I'm very, that was just, just awesome was uh, the bossy that, that uh, uh, Oscar, Oscar Ortiz that came from Eagle Pass. Very important component to the San Antonio musical uh, experience. Uh, he brought this kind of a rock and espanol, but you know, it, it also challenges the perceptions uh, or, uh, of, uh, of what frontera music is. You know, is it all uh, banda and uh, norteño? Well, you know, and what is San Antonio music? What is Tejano? Where's the Tejano? And to bring these things together, we find that they're very related, and one of the exciting places that they're related is in the contemporary. Musicians, good musicians, great musicians, but not all of them are, the, are, are having to go out there and make their living with their music. That's a whole other kind of a category of, of, of mu music, musician. I think of like the jazz, like Tony, Tony Romero and the, and, the, and the Spiders Jazz Ensemble. Um, Tony's a working musician, man. He's struggling to quit his job because he knows the only place he belongs in is jazz. But he's got to pay his bills, you know. So he works this job and works that job. But, but just the dynamic of those, not not just the, that musician, but that that force for survival and that music is my only way. I love the, the output of that personality. Uh, it's also an opportunity for people to come look at visual art and to get a break between gallery spaces. The musical break enables people to, to consider this art and then get a get a classical break of music like Fernando Herrera and then walk into another place and consider this art and get a punk rock uh, uh, opportunity to, to really radicalize your brain and maybe want to see some contemporary art and go look for that. Try to try to use all of the sensories uh, uh, to, to create an interest for people uh, that they may not have if they just go to a gallery. It, it's one thing to, to, to know artists, to work in the arts, and to, to be an artist, and, and 
it's an entirely different thing to have uh, loving relationships with people who are in the arts. And, and, and of, of one of the first experiences I've had in, in the arts is with my brother, who was the head of the Latin legends. And it, to me, the, the learning that I've got from him in watching his life struggle and how I've seen music and how people's art is so much more their salvation than it is anything else. Uh, because it's not just a matter of, of, of you know, the, the suffering and all that uh, that, can, that can come with it, but the excellence, the level of excellence that a, that a musician or an artist can, can rise to. For me, creating a benchmark for the value of a musician or the value of an artist, so much of it begins with him. Some people are, are uh, born leaders, born teachers, born ministers, born, uh, you know, they're born to do so, they have their destiny. Well, my destiny was to play music, you know, and, and I discovered later on in life that whether I got paid to do it, don't tell anybody this, <laughs> because then I'll go, they don't want, nobody will want well, to pay me anymore, bro. but I'd do it for free, you know? If I had to, if I was on a desert island with my guitar, I would play morning, noon, and night, because that's what I am, that's what I do. I'd write songs from the time I woke up to the time I went to bed, because that's what I do, that's what, I, that's what I'm driven to do, you know? I see how hard it is, you know, in, in, the, in the age when technology is changing and, 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 and the musicians don't know where to sell their CDs or, you know, radio stations, how do they get their talent now, uh, that more and more of the artists that we see in San Antonio are going to have to get out there the, the old way. It's, it's, to me, it's all about accessibility. If we, if we have access to the radio stations, to the major uh, outlets and venues, and, and there are places that we can perform our art, and there are radio stations and program directors, more importantly, that will embrace our art form and share it over the airwaves, then we can continue to do what we do. We, we all saw a lot of music change around the time of Selena's death. And, uh, you know, my brother goes back with, with that group of young musicians at the time, the, the Patsy Torres and the David Barrises and the Selena Quintanillas and, and uh, my brother's been able to stay true to the, to, the, to the form of music and I really feel like he's producing and, and coming out with the new sound that, that really will lead the, the whole future of what happens here in this regional music and the, on the contemporary. You know, we, we, we need to stop trying to be who we're not and let, let that that person inside of us come out, man. You know what I mean? Because we are we're good enough and we have good stuff to share with you. I think that was the, the, the most appealing thing about La Gloria to me was uh, was just that putting putting a face on art and culture. Uh, the art and culture of San Antonio by the actual artists and musicians of San Antonio. So it was really a way for us as uh, local uh, organizers and uh, artists to really define uh, what's really happening in San Antonio. You know, and uh, for a city as big as, as we are, such a you know, uh, of course, a, a tourist draw and everything so much uh, gets imprinted on, on who we are. Things are, are happening now, you know, things are happening here in San Antonio. There's uh, stuff that's going on here that's not going on anywhere else. And uh, try to utilize La Gloria as a way to highlight that, you know, fashion, art, music, uh, you know, visual art, sculpture, video, dance. I mean, it's, it's all here. So it's really just a way of us getting out there and, and, and representing.
think it's a perfect nexus, man. I think it's all time, it's all happening at the same time, and San Antonio is poised to be a city of evolution, you know? And I think with all the uh, industry that's here, uh, but all the cultura that's here, all the tradicion, uh, all the heart, the corazón that's in this town. I mean, we're proud to be Tejanos, we're also proud to be Chicanos, we're proud to be Latinos, we're proud to be international, uh, we're proud to be cosmic, you know. So I think in all of that, all of that I learned from San Antonio. And I like to tell people that I probably wouldn't have made it on fame if I had, you know, grown up as a, an actor in L.A. Instead, I grew up as an actor in San Antonio, and so I had a little something different than what traditionally they're used to seeing. So I, I use that as, again, as coming from a heart and soul that I've got. So I think that San Antonio is just the next city to take on the mantle of, uh, of being the next evolution of Latino culture. So we accept it, we love it, we're an international city, and uh, you know what it's all about. It's about being real and true to the self, so. Que viva la raza, que viva San Antonio. One time. You know, one, one, one thing too is that we have uh, this expectation of what it is to be cultural in San Antonio. Yeah, and we know what that is. I mean, uh, in San Antonio, you don't really study culturalism or, or, or culture is really come on, almost like a non-word because you live that. So where everybody else is informed by what is it to be Mexican-American, we're really not informed how to be Mexican-American. We are Mexican-Americans. Uh, our hopes are that in this renaissance that, that, that we know that we're in, that we're able to live up to the responsibilities of pushing ourselves to uh, forcing our environments uh, to, 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 to respond to our creative side. And I think that the, the world is, is, is in agreement that this is the age of the creative. If, if, if uh, our artists are creating art and, and they are uh, 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 breaking the boxes of their creativity, it can only lead to a positive future for all of us. Si el culpable soy yo, 